recording it. Don't worry, you haven't missed anything, YouTube. So we've got the Inland Sea here, which is used to be the home of the genies before it kind of went sploosh. And then those who were living on the periphery of that empire became the humans, the elves, the gnomes, and the halflings that we know today. Basically, depending on where they lived, uh, according to the big crater here in the center. So we had the humans, who were the nearest. So the humans would have been on this coast and down on this coast. And that matters because, like the genies, they used to be super magical. But with the big magical explosion, that magic was burned out of them. So they are no longer an inherently magical race. They can still do magic, but they have to train it and learn it. They are not inherently magic in the same way as, for example, the elves are. The elves were further out, so I'd say we probably have the elves here. In fact, I might even put the elves further back. So those who are on the coast were human. And then we were working on a network of rivers, and we were kind of thinking, okay, what if we made the elves like a river people? So the elves would be kind of back here, and then maybe they spread out more in this direction. That would actually give us something to put here. It would also mean the elves are right in the way of the various migrations coming in from the east, which would be a way of containing the elves, for sure. Yes, time to... For totally didn't take the major world shaping event from Anne Bernard world building. That's a little bit harsh. I've been working on this for years. I just haven't put it down on paper. So, elves are back here. The elves are what they are because the magic wasn't entirely burned out of them. They did lose a lot of it. Then we have the gnomes who are in the so-called shield mountains. The mountains, even though they're fairly close to it, shielded them from the main impact of the blast. Um, but the residual magical energies which still float around them were still dangerous and they eventually became resistant to them, hence the gnomish resistance to magic. Meanwhile, here in the south, in the um, Rain Shadow Mountains, we all need a proper name for them, um, we have the dwarves. So we have dwarves in this mountain range, dwarves in this mountain range. And the dwarves have become very wealthy because they sit on the junction of what is effectively the Silk Road. So the Silk Road comes in from over here and also in by sea from over here and then it passes through the Dwarves who basically have a monopoly on that before it is dispersed around the rest of the world here. Uh, in the swamps here and here we have Trolls just because we need a creature who is dangerous to trade and transport uh, which basically forces the trade to come via the desert because it is a lot safer. Then this little splotch of white down here, that is the um, Ice Oasis, which is actually the home of an ancient white dragon who slumbers, and basically a glacier is formed around him, and that glacier feeds the oasis, which is there in the middle of the desert, and there is probably going to be a dwarven settlement there as well, as kind of the midway point for trade going north-south through it. Then from the west... From a land which was a bit like Atlantis, we have the orcs. So the orcs came in from over this way and eventually populated the archipelagos down here. So the orcs have become the major maritime race of this area, although obviously they're going to be up against the shipbuilding powers of the inland sea, but they're, they're really the nautical ones. And then up here in the north, we were saying, okay, this is going to be where the goblins came in. So the goblins were from a previous migratory wave from the Orcish territories before the Atlantis event happened. And they settled this coastline. So we've got the goblinoids up here. The goblins are more Norse in culture. They're a lot more rugged. They're a lot more hardy. So we're not going to go for the weakling, terrified of everything goblinoids. These are going to be more hardcore um, which I'm pretty happy with. And then here in the big old forest is the effectively the Feywild. That is going to be where the Wood Elves and the Forest Gnomes are from. Uh, kind of similar to the Shield Mountains. A bunch of magic was dumped in these territories and kind of a little bit similar to the Gnomes. They ended up absorbing that magical power as opposed to rejecting it. Um, the big river going through the center of it is feeding this estuary and it is that estuary where the halflings can be found. The halflings being effectively the result of interbreeding between the gnomish peoples and the human peoples and then they settled this incredibly fertile area forming a agrarian realm. 
Now, one of the interesting things which kind of occurred to me when I was looking at the maps which I had created last time, like this one, is, well, what about the other coast? Because the halflings are on... Oh, this, for some reason, this program sometimes just doesn't load. I don't know why, but it's annoying. Um, but the halflings are basically in this little choke point, and they would absolutely have stuff on this side. Why wouldn't they? Now, what does that give them access to? I, I don't know. I haven't actually looked. There it is. So they would have access to kind of the goblinoids from the north. And then some of the humans down here. So it's a long way to go and sail all the way around. They'd probably also have been attacked by the orcs. Coming in from potential coastal raids. That could actually have been kind of one of the historical things that the halflings did. To kind of save this area from the orcs invasions. Is they took all of the ships that they have out here. Picked them up. Walked them across land, um, floated them again in this little ocean, then used them as a navy to beat off the orcs. I don't know, something like that sounds pretty cool. The bay from the big river would look better as a delta. So the reason I've kind of played around with this is a lot of this is reclaimed. So it kind of is a river delta. Um, but all of this farmland is reclaimed territory. Previously, all of this was a delta. And we did last week, and this is one thing that's actually changed since last session, is we said, okay, what if they dammed off this whole area? I'm not convinced they would have had the technology to do that. Like the offload stake in the Netherlands, that's a 1930s thing. Could they have done these smaller areas? Yeah, absolutely. Dike building and polders have been around for centuries. But something of that engineering scale, I don't think would have been feasible. So we've, we've got them reclaiming uh, the sea, reclaiming land, but it's not as high scale. Is this for your D&D group? It might well be. Um, we're currently running through an Icewind Dale campaign. I want to do some uh, homebrew stuff, and this probably would be the setting for that, yes. So all the farmland tiles are polders. Yeah, basically. Or at least this is the uber-fertile realm. So one thing that we did spend quite a bit of time doing last time was differentiating different fertility levels. So we've got the farmland, which is this. We've got um, fertile, which is this. We've got grassland, which is this. And then there was a less fertile, which is this. Which I don't remember what the game calls it. Select you, filter down to classic. Oh, grassland versus grazing land. So grazing land is like highland type thing. It's more hilly than this, which is flat and arable. Is there a scale for how big each hex is? Not really, not yet. The only thing to consider is this whole land mass is about the size of Europe. Actually working out how big each tile is, that's something we can get to later. And also, like, the the final map, I don't want to have tiled. I'd like it to be a proper cartographical map. Um, I'm just using tiles because it's easy to build, <laughs> quite frankly. Grazing land like plains, yeah. Um, which is... Different to steps. Step being what we have down here. And we'll probably have like a centaur people controlling the, the main crossing here. So probably a lot of the silk trade probably does come in. Or the silk road. It's not literally a silk road. It's probably other trade goods. But I'm just calling it the silk road because that's effectively what it is. Probably arrive by sea. Ah, would that make sense though? Because I think these just sell further south. That's a long way, though, going around this whole headland. Especially if they have to go around this to get to here. You know what? That's a really bloody long way. That's like going around the whole of Africa. Hence it goes over land via Constantinople. So we need the Ottomans in here. <laughs> the dwarves in this basically are like something between the Ottomans and the Swiss. 
I was thinking more Swiss, but now I'm kind of thinking about their positioning in the world. They probably are more like the Ottomans. Hills, grassy hills, grazing land, grassland, farmland, wheat field. Yeah, exactly that. We need boat dwarves. Oh, there are definitely boat dwarves. And in fact, if we go to our collection of maps, we have actually done one for the dwarven realms, which we can see here. And boat dwarves are based right there. And that's important because that's going to be the main access to these. And also, these are two different dwarven realms. So we've got the dwarfs spelt the Warhammer way and the dwarves spelt the Tolkien way. <laughs> Just to differentiate them. They're not actually spelt that way. In our world, they're spelt with a PH. Dwarfs. <laughs> um, so yeah, boat dwarves are based in here. That's of Doltunga right there. The Sublime Dwarvish Port. <laughs> there we go. That's the Sublime Dwarvish Port right there. Oh yeah, and then the last thing is this island is going to be turtles because turtles don't get enough love. I think they're an interesting group. Now, there is one faction which I'm still not 100% settled on and that is something that will probably emerge maybe during today. Is where the hell the hobgoblins are. Like, I've had the hobgoblins placed down here, I've had the hobgoblins placed over here, I've had the hobgoblins up here. I want the hobgoblins to be a really important faction because they hold some very important lore in this setting. But where the heck are they? I don't know. Maybe that is just something that will emerge when we get to the, the placing of peoples. In fact, it probably will be. Hobgoblins are not nomadic. The hobgoblins are somewhere between Greek city-states and Italian city-states. They're a very, very martial race who live in effectively a very loose confederation. And the idea there is that their city-states are constantly fighting each other. But those wars are bloodless. They're not for, to the death. They're more like the flower wars that the Aztecs had. So it was for slaves and it was for um, bragging and resources. Um, but the battle or the wars themselves aren't really bloody. They're, they're not there to kill each other. Except when a third outside party who was used to killing stuff rolled right over them and virtually wiped the hobgoblins out because they had forgotten how to fight properly. Like, they could fight, they just couldn't kill. And then this other group comes in and just obliterates them. But that's when the rise of the hobgoblin church, whatever we call that, happened and became a bit more of a theocracy. And now what this church does is they will declare some of these wars to be red wars. And then they are to the death. They are lethal wars, they are fought to the death. And the reason for that is that the hobgoblins keep their martial edge. And when the city-states are not fighting each other, they hire themselves out to the other city-states as mercenaries, or to the other realms in general. So there is a lot of hobgoblin movement around. And it is quite possibly the spread of ideas is via the hobgoblin migrations. That's my idea for them anyway. Lethal wars to the death, exactly. That's, that's their official name. Doing the goblins before hobgoblins makes sense. See, that, that, that was another thing we were talking about uh, last time is, are the hobgoblins and the hobgoblins, are the goblins and the hobgoblins necessarily related? Probably, but how closely? We don't know. Because we did kind of think, okay, what if the... No, you know what it was. I remember now. The difference between the goblins and the hobgoblins is the difference between the Vikings and the Normans. The goblins stuck out up here and live pretty isolated raider existences. The hobgoblins started out as raiders and then moved in. So actually it would kind of make sense if the hobgoblins started out here. Because then they're close enough to the quote unquote civilized races to have been incorporated by them or possibly even like on this side. But then who would their threat have been? The orcs? I'm not sure I particularly like it being the orcs. I think I'd rather it was somewhere over here. But anyway, that, that's what the hobgoblins are. Plus, like, mass migrations, I very much want. So it's kind of like the Visigoths appearing in, like, the Balkans, then ending up in Spain. Now, that happened. Or the Vandals appearing in the Balkans and ending up in Morocco. 
Hobgoblins could absolutely have started here, were wiped out by whatever attacked here, and ended up settled like in here or something. I don't know. Last time we talked about them going the northern way and conquering down the east, the uh, Alexander style. Yeah, possibly via these territories. So the Hobgoblins, is, I think what's going to happen is we're going to place most of the others. And then when we get to the Greenskin migration, so the arrival of the Goblins, the arrival of the Hobgoblins, the arrival of the Orcs, that's when we'll kind of use them as a spanner to throw in the works of all of these guys. And those are going to be one of the, like, the cataclysmic changes that allows us to rewrite what is happening and why. They were essentially hop light goblins. And then the hop light was bastardized to become hob. I like that. That's good. Alright, I'm going to write that down. So I need my World Anvil documents, which is here. Races. Origins. Orcs, hobgoblins, orcs, goblins, hobgoblins. Here we go. Were initially known for their excellent hop light legions. Alexander type era. And that name was eventually bastardized to become Hob goblins not entirely keen on the goblins living so far north considering the small size but we can discuss that Because I quite like the, the hobgoblins being known as hoplites and then hop became hob. Was misheard by a chronicler or something. Anyway, so what I think we want to do now is probably the elven territories. It is time for us to get our hands dirty and work on the elves. And they are going to be over here. So one other thing I want to do is just open up the... World before the disaster, and this is important because you will notice that this inland sea is in fact a lake. And this will give us an idea of the lay of the land in terms of the rivers. And the elves we were talking about having as river folk. Now this bit gets inundated and becomes this. So that is now all underwater. Which means that the river section here is kind of the furthest extent of what we were talking about. So the elves probably really were the frontiers people out here. They need to be written elves with a PH. <laughs> oh, I like that. Uh, right, so, is that a forest here? No, the forest gets removed. I don't think that was actually a forest, I think that was just me trying to fill in some stuff. Alright, so, rivers. I think that's what I want to play with first. So the first thing is, I'm going to remove a bunch of this scattered water. I don't want this to be necessarily wetlands. We have quite a few of those particularly down there. Lakes are fine. Having some of these lakes interconnected rivers, fine. But the bits like in here, no. So let's go ahead and just cover those up right now for the time being. Something like that. And then let's just put a roof thing there. And then let's put those there. And I think I'm also going to get rid of these bits. And of course all of the deserty bits are 
going. I have no interest in keeping this area deserty. It is way too freaking far north. And I might even try to put some hills kind of in this area. Which is why the sea didn't wash out and absorb the river lands. Maybe it did. I mean, we can always push the water further out. If we wanted to put the elves out here. Could always make some of the small lakes into marshlands. That's true. No, you know what? I actually still quite like the idea that the elves are like the river people. Except the river kind of feels like it would make sense if it drained through here. Where does it drain right now? Yeah, see, it goes all the way. Oh, it was fed by those mountains. Which is... These. So you have river coming in here, then river coming through here. So this is like the, the meeting point of two rivers. It's going to be an important strategic area. Okay, so if we go to the do 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 shapes line preset stream. No, this is a full-on river. This is definitely a full-on river. One hundred percent navigable. And I think what we'll do is have you coming in from there to here, through here. Down to there. Whoops, don't do that one. Enter. How do I... <laughs> Select new. So we got one river coming through that. And then I think it is going to run... What the heck is happening? Through to there. Uh, this bit is ugly as hell. For Pete's sake. Could be more something like that. I really dislike that. One watery province. I'm just going to get rid of that. You're in the way. You don't add anything. And then features. Not features. Shapes. Line. Let's try that again. So you're coming in down here. into there. Then we have another river which is coming in to there and then draining out to here. Meaning that this section here is probably going to be pretty heavily populated by elves. We could even have another river draining out of there. What's that mountain do? Okay, that one actually goes south. That's interesting. So you drain down into here, then maybe out there. Or it goes further south. And kind of creates a headland. Yeah, there's a used to be a really big lake here, which is now this. That's what it drained into. So yeah, it just drains into this. Sploosh. Well, don't do that.
Isn't the stream not an even bigger river? No. Opposite. Streams are barely navigable. Too small. Okay, so that flows into there. So what other river networks do we have down here? We have these two lakes, which would feed into there as well. I'm kind of tempted to make this even bigger. And just have this whole uh, area as marshy lowland. Which should be out to here. Mm, maybe not. No, those are higher because these hills have been protecting you. But then the rivers, which were feeding you from the north... Oh no, there's also a river. Yeah, that's a stream feeding into this. So river would be coming from this direction. Maybe it goes harshly, except for the hills. Yeah, I kind of feel like this would be marshy. So let's go and do some of that. I think it would be marshland. No, this would be swamp. It's foresty. So then let's put swamp. In all of this section. So you have this one area which is not swampy. You even have farmland coming through there. And down here. So this area is quite fertile. And that becomes grassland. Maybe even grazing land. Up here, around the hills. Which makes this area quite valuable, because it's going to be pretty agricultural. You could even have attempts over here to start turning that into polders, kind of like the halflings did. But it's probably... It's too dangerous. It's too near the trolls. That's probably why it hasn't happened. But it's an area that certainly could be settled in that way. turn this whole area into forest and then that can be a spot of grassland in the middle and I think I'm going to turn this into grassland as well maybe grazing land yeah I like that more And then all of these hills can be green hills. Grassy hills. These can be the grassy hills. Which means there is a bit of a passage along here. Which could be a tempting target for those who are trying to avoid the dwarves. It's good to have tempting targets. It leads to good stories. This should definitely be Green Hill. And these become grassland hills. And you are going to be a tiny bit of farmland. There we go. I much prefer how that little section looks. Any volcanoes in this area? Probably not. I wouldn't be that surprised if some of these are volcanic. 
So we do need to think about why volcanoes would exist. Are they just a hotspot? Are they just random? Or are they part of the, the plates? And we have already kind of established that these hill, these mountain ranges are ripples. They're not plate edges. And this sea here was probably glacial. So you would have had glaciers coming through this way, this way, and then settling on top of this during the Ice Age. Seems like a great narrow passage for trade, forts, and banditry. I'm thinking more banditry. Like, the, the trade that comes through the desert is protected by the dwarves. The trade coming through here, it's too close to the trolls. There might be other hill monsters that take over this area. And in fact, that area, I think, actually needs to be proper hills, not green hills. Stuck in the middle, as they are. So it's still not easy. It's hilly. It's not open. Those hills, however, should be grassy. And that should be that. You should all be forest, hills, not jungle, too far north for jungle, and this little bit should be grassland. Real world volcanoes are too logical. There should be fantasy reasons why volcanoes exist, like dragons or fire elementals. We could definitely do that. Like, that's why there's a glacier in the middle of this desert, because there's a freaking dragon there. So, definitely not going to cast off mountains if they're there for mythical reasons, but then we need to come up with a mythical reason for them to be there, and how that would have affected the environment around them. But volcanoes, like natural volcanoes, um... They can also exist, but then they do need to have a natural reason. Alright, I feel like I need to create the river that comes through here. So how do you flow? There's a river that flows from these mountains. I mean, that's basically impossible to see now because of the swampland. There is also a river from these, which is this. Oh no, that is that. What about behind you? Yeah, you have the rivers connecting this. So that's connecting all of these, and then where does that river come from? That river comes from in here. Okie dokie! So if we go to the shapes, choose the river. That comes from the corner just in front of this, so it's from here. Then flows down in between these and then around there. Okay. Up to there. And then comes around. Ignoring this. Okay, I might get rid of that little lake. That doesn't make much sense to me. And comes around this way into there. In that case, I kind of feel like it would make more sense if the river came through here. And then fed into this where it just out. So I'm going to get rid of these little sections. I might turn that into just swamp. Maybe I'll turn that into marsh instead of swamp. It's a little bit more livable. Ah, there's forest behind it. Nah, that's still definitely swamp. Boop. I think I'm going to get rid of you as well.
I like ponds. Well, I, I would imagine that each of these hexes are like 10 miles big. So having just a little pond represented on here doesn't really make sense. They need to be lakes. And also this map just has too many of the little scattered lakes. Like in some areas, like up here, it might make sense. Along here, it might make sense. But down here, nah. I'd like it to be a little bit more homogenous. And I quite like the lie of this. So this... is pretty messy. Would boats get through here? Probably not. Not anymore. Also, this section should be a stream, not a river. It's not navigable. So we're going to go down to you. We're going to click on you. And then we're going to drop you down to a 20 size, which I think is what I was using for the streams. Yes. Whoops. Oh, I can actually do it that way. Okay, that's cool. So this bit is not navigable, at least not by big barges. This bit is, which is why I kind of feel like we should show where the river goes through the swamp. Let's see all more. If you want to learn more about volcanoes, YouTube channel Geology Hub is run by a volcanologist. Primarily covers volcanoes. Definitely would be a good research point before diving into the world of volcanism. Fair enough. Now the other consequence of this would be the dwarves might actually try to use it to get to the sea down here. But because this is so marshy and so swampy, that has so far been impossible. So they probably instead send trade around to here, which means that this would be a fairly major port. Yeah, because I've been thinking that trade would come through this mountain pass. So it probably goes do to do to do to do to do do to do to do to do to do to here. And this needs to be gotten rid of. We're gonna make it more grasslandy. Uh, the bits immediately around the lake can be fertile. These can definitely be fertile. Uh, grassland. And we'll just have the grassland going up to the sea there. This does not need to be fertile. There is nothing fertilizing it. Okay. We'll make these little bits here into farmland. Although I'm kind of tempted to make this just lightly wooded. There you go, that makes more sense to me. So you can kind of see that there is a bit of a trail appearing through there. Our swamp's going to have very poor and anoxic water like in real life. They're more lively here. Um... No. Well, it depends on where the swamp is. Like, this swamp is probably lots of still water, whereas this one is probably more movement. This would be more... It's not moorland. What's that? Is it moorland? Hang on, let me just see what the... definition of moorland is. Highlands. Okay, that's the opposite. <laughs> Moorlands is like Scotland. Because more is something that we can do here. We also have Savannah, but I feel like that would be further south. And Shrubland too. Like there are actually lots of different types of like grassland we could do. And then we have the difference between marshes and swamps. Swamps are forested. 
Marshes aren't. Marshes are like reeds. As far as the eye can see. In fact, yeah, that probably is marsh. What area were we just talking about? I think that this would be marshy. Because one of the nice things about this is we can always have somebody try to dry this out if we think it's reasonable for them to do. Like the halflings did over here and reclaimed it. But this area is already pretty nasty. So you would have to come through these woods to get to the the passage. And this is going to be an interesting area. Who the hell lives here? <laughs> and this is forested, so I think it is swampy. Maybe like here in the middle it's more marshy. The trees can't really get themselves established. There we go, because what I'm thinking of here is, uh, like, Norfolk. What kind of terrain is Norfolk? Like the Norfolk Broads. It's like that. It's bloody wet. It's marshy as hell. Fens? Oh yeah, that's the bit around Lincoln, which was the area that was drained, so yes, this would be Fens. This would absolutely be Fens. Yeah, I like that more. That, that makes more sense to me now. And that is an actual bona fide lake, so is that. And these two can be as well, so can that. And then we get to all of the massive desert area. So all of this needs to be converted into something else. And I think that's going to be grazing land in here. And get rid of all the fertile bits and bit pieces. And then those hills can be grassy hills. Because the desert's this bit. I quite like that there's a flipping massive forest here which would make it much more difficult to get through east to west, which is probably why the dwarves actually control some of the land up here. Or maybe this is like one of the major points of contrition between the northern elves and the southern dwarves. Well, the northern dwarves and the southern elves. You know what I mean. So many wetlands are categorized by water acidity. A fen is basic and the bog is acidic. And then a swamp is trees. It's complicated. What about canals? The dwarves could claim up some of the coastal lakes and build a canal out to the sea. I mean, remember this is quite a long way. Canal across here? Absolutely. And this is probably going to be one of the things that happens at some point during our timeline. Canal up here? That's a long way. Because again, we're... This game starts and this map ends 1444. I'm, I think it's a nice idea to use the uh, the E4 start date. It's an era I'm familiar with and in that instance yeah I'm copying Ambernor definitely. I think it's a good idea. So 1444 is like the cutoff. That's that's when 
this world is set. And there weren't really major canal works at that point. It's too early. Would monsters and such live in forests? Yeah, absolutely. Which is why if this is a frontier, this probably is populated by various monstrous creatures. Which would suggest that the elves are like out here. Like I'm still kind of struggling to see the exact extent of the elven realms. I mean, that's one of the things that we will determine. What we'll probably do is say, this is the elven spawn point. This is the human spawn point. This is the dwarven spawn point. What happens next? Okay, then we have dry grasslands, which is probably known as shrubland. And I'm going to put the shrubland in here. You know, I'm going to turn this whole forested area into shrubs. Grassland can be along the actual coast, and then those can be grassy hills. Nope, they can be shrubland hills. I just deleted one of the mountains. Didn't want to do that. And then these hills, I think, can be just as they are. That's fine. Because so I don't think they would necessarily be grassy hills. We want to turn those into grazing lands. Out here. I feel like more of this should probably be swampy. And I would also suggest that this is fed by something. Like, this is probably a salt flat down here. So let's turn you into marsh. So there is technically a land bridge there, but it's only flooded. Or only passable certain times a day. <laughs> Making that swamp a heck of a lot bigger. And then I think I might just... Uh, no, that's too much swamp. I might do like the outer limits swampy. Something like that. And then let's do grassland in here, because that can still be fertile. That's fine. Then what's this? I mean, that could actually be the source of a river coming through here. I see no problem with that. We'll just stick a river going straight across through here. Then I might get rid of some of those ponds. So I think that this should be marshy. What's more? Habitat found in the upland. Oh. Really? That was literally the first thing I searched for. It looks like it should be a part of marshland. Where was it? Uh, there. There's not. That's the high bit.
And then these almost certainly would be green hills. Like, that's going to be pretty fertile. Pretty wet, but pretty fertile. Likewise with these. And then we have a bit of a random bit there, which I think we're going to turn into marshland. Same with you, same with you. Uh, no, let's make that into grassland. I'll turn those into marsh. Yeah. Okay, let's go and grab the shapes. Line. We're talking stream? Are we talking stream or we're talking river here? Probably river. That's quite... No, rivers are big bulky things. They don't have enough stuff to feed it. There we go. There's a little river that goes in there. So these lakes, I think, have pretty much got to go. We'll just turn those into shrubs. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Yeah, that's better. Um, these lakes I'm okay with because they're low-lying. This I'm okay with because it's kind of up here and I can see water being just trapped there. These need to be hilly. And then we have... Actually, those are probably grassland hills there. And then we have the step coming in. So let's get the grazing lands... Actually, I think that some of those should be hill grassland. Maybe not that one. No, that's fine. And then this needs to be something that can probably... Actually, you know what? Let's make... Th I'm wondering if we want to make some of this more land, so it's a bit higher up, like in here. Eh, it doesn't really feel right. I think moorland would be more like in here, maybe. Or maybe in here. We don't have to have it. And we should also even out the, the Dwarven Realms at some point, but... I'm pretty happy with how we're kind of just covering different parts of the map and updating them as we go around. And then once we have all of that layer polished, then we can start housing people. Still need to clear out the elven area too. Too much desert up there. A lot of what I'm doing here is just getting rid of the deserts. Why does this map gen like desert so much? I don't get it. Grassy hills. Grassy hills. Very grassy hills. Grassy... possibly shrubby hills. No, those would be grassy. Grassy hills. Grassy hills. Grassy hills. And then I think we're going to go to grazing land. No, this is probably grassland. Around the lake, a little bit lower. I think that would be grazing land. That is pristine grazing land. Same as this.
and I think all of this is going to be grazing as we begin to progress towards where the step is. So there's no real reason that this couldn't be grass. Whoops, some of that got rid of here. Let's have the grassland stretch out to Sod it, let's turn this all into grass. This doesn't go uphill. This this is just flat land. This is perfectly arable. Which is interesting because that means that somebody's probably settled here. This is very flat. This is like Poland. Or maybe France. Now I think we're going to have some grazing land up in these sections here. Probably in this little pass it's going to be grazing. It's higher. And then those are going to be grassy hills. I feel like we're reaching the flat step land now. Yeah, so I might actually get rid of a portion of the woods here. Maybe have a woodland in this area, then push all of this to be step. Maybe kind of this pass area. So close. And that's why this is lightly forested as opposed to heavily. And then this would also be grazing land down here, around the hills. Gonna get rid of those. Gonna turn that into a grassy hill. So what is the difference between steppe and grassland? That's probably something we ought to know. Step lands are quite a bit more hostile. That's right, that's right, yeah. Steps are more stony. Rainfall, that too. I kind of feel like I don't like this forest here. We're going to make it grazing land. This needs to be turned into... I mean, honestly, those can actually be legit hills. It's still being somewhat affected by the, the rain. Well, it's not really. It's just drier over there. A lot of the rain's been dropped in here. 
kind of feel like maybe there should be another little mountain range along here. Part of this. You can see it kind of connecting these. Yeah, you know what? I kind of like that. I mean, this already kind of has it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to expand the hills. Out here. So there is a low hill mountain range coming along here. Which then probably expands up into this, which is probably going to be like... High plateau type thing. Step versus prairie versus grassland. Time for some googling. So gra prairie is what I've been doing the... What have they been calling it? Grazing land. Grazing land and prairie is what this is. Then we have grassland, which is France. So it's grassland, France, Portugal. Prairie, American Midwest and Texas. Steppe, Mongolia. I do feel like I want this to be a bit taller than it currently is. I want it to be an actual block to east-west trade. That's why it comes via the dwarves. Yeah, we're, we're going to turn this into hardier territory, hardier terrain. We can definitely do it via forested mountains. So the areas which are currently hills are going to become mountains. Then the areas which are neither are going to become hills. We're going to have a nice big old mountain range coming through here. Oh yeah, I like that more. I like that a lot more. And then these are going to be the foresty hills. I think I might even just make this less... Less hospitable. And this really is a big blocker between the east and west. And then we have kind of a high plateau area out here. There's like a Nepal almost. And that is going to be best shown by the terrain type I've been waiting to use. Not Hill Shrubland, where's it gone? Moorland. There it is. Something interesting is going to live in here. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, I'm just going to turn all of this into moorland. This is all highland area. This is where the goliaths are. This is where the goliaths are. We haven't actually put the goliaths anywhere. I think we're going to put a couple more regular hills in here just to make sure. This feels high. 
And then around this lake, I think, is going to be probably the nicest bit. And that's going to be grazing land. This is where their pastures are. Those should be hills. That should also be a hill. Or possibly forested hills. Moors are plateaus, yeah. Moors are highlands. It's like Scotland. Scotland's a better way of describing this. Not Nepal. Nepal's even further high. This is Scotland, right here. Oops, that's not supposed to be hill. That's supposed to be moorland. The moors. And then it kind of comes down as we get closer to the... Let's have, like, grassy hills. As we come back down on the other side. Or regular hills. Okay, regular hills. This is still fairly dry compared to other areas. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, so what are we going to have in here? I think that's honestly more moorland. Let's turn this into some more hilly area. More moors. Moor moors. This bit needs to be something else. I think that needs to be forested hills. There we go. So what are these? Um, this could be like a bit of a hidden valley. Might even be where a river goes. We haven't placed any rivers up there. Uh, probably because it's mostly streams, not rivers. I think that's going to be grazing grounds. It's high, but it's not as high as the Moorish areas. means there's a bit of a low bit there. So if there was a river coming, it would probably go through here, then down here, through here, and then probably out there. Maybe between these. That's why there's a bit of low... No, oh, no, it's not low. Yeah, it would come to here. So come through this, which is why this is not more. Here, here, through there. Around and then down. The other thing I need to do is get rid of these volcanoes. I don't think that they're particularly in place here. Let's just replace them with regular old mountain and replace you with just grassland. We'll make this all into grassland down here. You have some areas which are a bit more arable. And then you have this section down here. Uh, which honestly should be more moors. And then this bit... I think needs to be hills.
So if there were going to be hill country dwarves, they would be here. So you've got the mountain dwarves over here. And then the hill dwarves here. And then elves on the other side, which is why you have the dwarven elven conflict all the time. Because this is a really important trade area. Or it could be if they weren't constantly killing each other. Because where would the passes be? There's a pass here. There's a big old pass here though. It's all forested. That would be pretty nasty to get through. Same here. In fact, this is probably one of the easiest routes. That is a very natural pass right there. That is a... That's an important spot. So it needs to be closed somehow. <laughs> so it goes south. That's too easy. I'm closing that one. I want the pass to be up here, because then we're getting into the, the Highland Dwarf realms. And again, like, is there any reason not to have this? There could just be some conflict. Conflict is what is what shuts that area. I'm going to leave it. We can always shut it later if we want to. That could be one of the, the big things that happens in the campaign. Right, then we are going to have you do this. And I want to fill more of this in. I think that's just going to be grazing lands, to be honest. A nice little open area in what's otherwise pretty heavily forest. It's definitely not fertile, that's for sure. And over here we have grazing lands as well. Which trickles down towards where the step is. And this is going to be, I think, grassland. This is arable. Let's go grazing lands over here. And around there. Oh wait, that would be grassland on the coast. It's low-lying enough that it can be. Big old war going there. Well, here's the thing. Remember that the history of this world is going to span hundreds, if not thousands, of years. And having points of conflict like this pass is going to be vital to promote conflict. Conflict is a is something which allows big changes. And if that pass gets shut eventually, like, we can make multiple versions of this map where that pass gets shut by a wizard going, No! Boom! Or we could put like an undead necromancer or something up there who demands a toll and that toll is your soul. I don't know, it's fantasy. Is that grazing ground? No, it's grassland. I think this can all be grassland out here. So those hills should all be grassy hills. I mean, the bit up here should probably be grazing. No, you know what? This is all... It's actually a fairly high land. This should all be grazing. Uh, you know what? Grassland around the lakes. There's a nice little lowland bit down there before it becomes grazing. Whoops. Grazing land again. We'll need to turn these hills here in the middle into something a bit more appropriate. Like grassy hills. Yeah, this is, this is prime grazing land. There's a lot of it. Might even make a bit more of this middle strip into grassland. Make it kind of a weirdly disconnected 
region. That needs to become grassland, and like I said, I don't want that just to be a perfect flower. So we're going to make grassland kind of here in this central space where it's not quite so high. I kind of feel like some of the lowest land is going to be this. Uh, no, this is going to be grazing up to there. So we have this little triangle, which is grass. So now we're getting into the elven realms. Probably. So turn it all into blighted lands. <laughs> this honestly here is grass. Like this is perfectly arable. Part of the reason why the elves are, I would say, probably quite prosperous. And I'm even going to say that this bit should be farmland, because that's a pretty big river. Yeah, so this is another of the probably relatively high population areas of the world. Uh, no, let's keep that forest. Might actually turn you into forest as well. There you go. Because it definitely feels like this would be the Elven Heartland. I'm really pleased with the amount of progress we've made here, actually. This is good. I don't like how random this is. Better. And then we start getting up into the hills here, so this is going to be gra um, grazing land, but I think that those are definitely going to be grassy hills. At least all of this should be. Interesting with you. I think I'm going to make you at least. Mm, no. Grassland. Because here's the thing that might all be forest now, but that could all be cleared. Because this is perfectly good land. <laughs> so, you know what? Yeah, we're going to. Whoops. We're going to forest up this whole little area. And then that's definitely farmland through here because that's amazingly good territory. Deciduous. And then we're going to put hills with trees on them. Now we could have a little open spot over here. So we're going to do grassy hills and probably grazing land. No. We're going to do grazing land for this bit. And I think this is also going to be grassland.
And we'll have some regular old farmland down here. With green hills. On those bits. And then this, I think, is also going to be farmland. Do I want to give them that much farmland? It's quite a lot. Why is this so fertile? No, this shouldn't be grass. No, farmland, this should be grassland. Yeah, that's a better decision. And then we'll throw in a couple of grassy hills. I was like, have I gone blind? Where the heck is the grassland? You know what? No. Forest. Watching this really de-stresses you. Good. Yeah, so we're definitely going to have river elves. We're going to have wood elves, but the wood elves are mostly going to be from in here or near here. I was actually thinking this might be the Wood Elves, and then this is the Feywild in all of its madness. And then you have kind of elves stretching up out here. Maybe these guys are isolated and we put something else in here. I haven't quite decided. Definitely going to have River Elves, then we're going to have Elves which are back here. Yeah, I'm going to make this grassland. There is no reason for this to be so fertile. It's not like it's being fed or anything. However, those can definitely be grassy hills. No, let's, let's turn all of those into grassy hills. Uh, not you. You should be just grassland. Cool. And then there was also some more grassland that we wanted to do here. We wanted to turn all of these. I do kind of wish the, the colour was a bit different on the grassy hills versus the grassland. land here too. The bit immediately around that lake can be farmland. And stretching between these lakes And then we have this. That is going to be cultivated. And those hills are going to be grassy. So, very dense urban here, for sure. Map's definitely looking better with all the random deserts being cleared up. Yeah, fully agree with you. <laughs> and also reducing the number of just random lakes and things I think also helps. Though in this area I don't have so much of a problem with it. Because this has always been low-lying. This, this whole region. A point where I might actually remove this. Turn that into grasslands. Or forest, you know? Let's just make that into a forest. 
Maybe even a thick forest. And then we need to start calming this down as well a bit. So we got the highlands which are supposed to be dry. Which also annoys me a bit that the moors are coloured kind of like the swamps because it gives the wrong impression. I wonder if it's possible to edit these tiles. Probably is. In fact, I know it is. Do elves cultivate those? Is that human lands? No, elves do, for sure. The only ones that might not would be the wood elves. They'd probably have a more hunter-gatherer type society, but high elves and river elves, 100% they would. Sun elves, as they're known as in known as in D and D. And yeah, their realm is definitely like this coast. I mean, this northern coast might well be human. Which would mean that there'd be a struggle over who controls this area. So maybe the, the elven homelands are back here. Then this is a bit of a frontier area. Which gets fought over constantly by both sides. Again, we'll... we'll at some point in the future need to put like spawn points saying okay this is this is where these guys started this is where these guys started and then start dividing them up into nations clans tribes factions and we can go from there and start actually creating a, a history for all of the intertwined groupings we'll have to create some kind of simulation like crusader kings type thing who's in charge of what when how who Because we do have this, like, entire landmass back here that's just kind of there. It's kind of similar to this. This is a lot more Highlands-y. In fact, some of this stuff here in the middle probably should be Moorland. I thought we could have, like, a Lost World here in the center. Ooh, that's kind of interesting. I might do that. With mountains kind of around the edge. Though why there's this many mountains here, I don't know. That's Norway. Norway happened. So maybe we need to create some more aggressive fjord-like structures going into the mountains. Maybe high elves come from the highlands. I was thinking goliaths from up here. Goliaths being the mix of dwarven and human, and maybe even elven influences. Or dragonborn. Because we'd always said that the Dragonborn had come in from the east. We haven't really given them a place to call their own. This might well be Dragonborn. And it's like the Highlands is... They're dug in. They are really dug in here. And they can bring in reinforcements from the east. So they probably have a port here that kind of supplies and supports all of their fortresses. After their invasion. And we could probably put the Goliaths up here. Although we always wanted to have some kind of connection between the Dwarves and the Goliaths. So why are they at literal opposite ends of the continent? We have also said that the dwarves are probably one of the oldest races. So maybe that dwarf and goliath split happened prior to the genies. Also possible. And yeah, land does continue up here, I just haven't done it. Like, especially this. This definitely continues. This, probably not as much. Although I think I probably will fill in this. Yeah, 
So I don't really have any need for a ocean structure there. Maybe keep this large lake. Maybe keep it as a large lake. That works. Then I'll fill this in. But then that just increases the size of the land bridge. I actually kind of like that there are somewhat choke points. Although the choke points would be a lot easier to guard. Maybe I will just leave this open. So this is a relatively dangerous entry point, except it's kind of weirdly fortified by the, the hills. This is much more open. When something comes through here, it's dangerous. <clears throat> the big bay lake in the middle would look like an awesome place for a civilization. What do you mean here? What do you mean this? This. This is kind of... Oh, in the north. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Like, I, I do like the idea that there is something up there, which the elves are then trading with. Like, maybe we do put the Goliaths just there up in the far north, so this is like Icewind Dale up here. Alright, I want to see if there's a way of editing these tiles. I just want to change the coloring. I don't want to change that they actually exist. Yeah, it's the background. Right, first thing I'm going to do is save. <laughs> so this is going to be called World Origin 5. 5. Okay, then, let's take a look. So we've got... Farmland is fine. Farmland cultivation is fine. Flatland deciduous, those... Forest bits are fine. Jungle is fine. Forest mix is fine. Flat grassland is fine. Poor grassland is fine. Okay, no they're not. So I actually kind of want to switch grassland with grazing land. Grazing land is greener. And I feel like grassland should be greener. Please tell me that did not just crash. No. So that's grassland, then grazing land. Should be going a little bit more towards the yellow. Like there. Why do you keep minimizing? That's very annoying. And then we have moorlands, which should be even more yellow. Should be probably about there. Wow, that's annoying. Alright, now if I apply... Ah, there we go! Okay, that is a sickly green. We'll need to fix that. Moorland. Oh, I like that a lot more. Yes, Moorland makes sense to me now. Probably still a little bit too blue. Right, so which is which? <laughs> Grassland is the nuclear colour. Grazing land, we didn't change. Yeah, it was just... 
Oh, hang on. Are some of those the hills? No, the hills are these. The hills are fine. Hills could do with a bit more yellowy color. But grassland needs a very different color. Wow. It's too yellow. So, grassland. Where are you? Grassland. You need to be a lot less yellow. More green. Uh oh, there's two of them. Nope, that's too bright. So you need to go more like down this way. Still really bright. Why are you so bright? That's why. Thing is, I don't want to make it too close to... That's not changing what I need it to change. Ah, oh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, that's what I was doing wrong. Too dark, way too dark. Let's go back up to 80%. Let's go unsaturate you. My god, that's annoying. Better. So the difference now between farmland and you... Is that you have the icon? And then grassy hills, I think, need to be a little bit darker as well. Grassland hills, not grassy hills. Because I mostly just want them to be differentiated from this. There you go. There you go. That makes it easier to see what's happening. Now I do feel like this is too bright. Whereas this is too dark. You know what? I'm going to lighten you up a little bit. So you're more of an in-between. If anything, that should be the colour of the grazing land. So let's make the grazing land less bright. And then let's make you a bit greener. Too green. <laughs> Way too green. Better. Still don't like it. I 
I mean, at least the grassland and the... Grassland, grassland needs to be lighter. Like a lighter green, not brighter green. How do I do that? Okay, then grazing land, I want to have a bit more yellowy. So this should be grassland. I think I got the wrong thing, the wrong place there. So the difference between farmland and farmland cultivated that you can see the latter from space like in terms of crop density. So the way that I've been doing it is farm cultivated is intensely farmed. So it's like reclaimed territory, it's polders, it's, it's worked. Whereas grassland is just fertile land that can be worked. And then grassland is arable land. And then grazing land is like pastures. That's the way I've been using it. And then there's actually uh, wheat fields, which I've put as um, uh, floodplains, which is what the halflings have. Which is different from what they have here. No, I think I still kind of want... Where's it gone? Grassland to be a little bit greener. Too green. Or too blue. That's back to where it was. There you go. No. I <laughs> still don't like it. I have something in my mind, which is what I'm trying to go for here. I really need to be darker. That's uh, just gone back that way. Like, I want it to be somewhere between you and you. So it needs to be more yellowy. That's the problem. Except it still needs to be more green than that. Okay, now it just needs to be lighter. There you go. Okay, so this was clearly the wrong thing. That should be grassland. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Now I can really see the differences. And then these, I think, need to be changed a little bit as well. So the grass hills need to be yellower. Where are they? They're further down, aren't they? Grassland. You need to be a tiny bit more yellow.
Oh, for Pete's sake. I think it's when I had this up that it wasn't minimizing every time. That work. So now we can really see the difference between those different types of, and also the the step is a bit closer to them now as well. So there we go. So we've got good quality, middle quality, poor quality, arable. Depending on how yellow it is. The greener it is, the better it is. So because that's going further north, that's why I think I made that less good quality. So here we want to have grassland up against the river itself. Still too dark. Looks wet. Now it looks even wetter. So the thing that's wrong is Hugh is going the wrong way. Still looks too wet. Still does. What's making it look blue? Now it's way too dark. <laughs> Going the wrong way. There you go. Yeah, I like that more. Okay. So we can really see where the the good farmland is against the excellent farmland. Against the, it's alright, farmland. Against the step. I think I might actually make the step a little bit more grey. Though it's already a decent colour. Uh, as soon as I can find the step. Where is it? It's going to be with all the flatland stuff, isn't it? There it is. Step. Too green. It's going to be that way. I just don't want it to get too dark. There you go. Now we can really see it apart from the, the other ones. Cool. Right. Enough messing around with the colours. Now I've got the colours right. We can get on with the rest. I mean, the big part of why I wanted to do that is so that we could differentiate where the... Not the shrubs. The grassy hills versus the grazing and the grassland because when we come to converting this into an actual cartographical map as opposed to a hex map I want to be able to see the difference alright so I think we should probably start filling in a little bit more of this stuff so if we have the mountains kind of going along that way we definitely have a ripple effect 
which, which suggests that there's another mountain range that comes along here, which is what this was basically built up against. So here the terrain went down before rippling up next to it. So I think we'll have another mountain range maybe coming along here, which is what this built up behind. So how about we get some grassy... Actually, these are... It's getting further north. These are probably shrubland hills. Like, there's some stuff that grows around them, but it's not necessarily very good. And we can still have passes going between them. That's totally fine. No, nah, Tundra's further north. We're not in Siberia yet. We're close, but we're not there yet. Like, this up here is probably St. Petersburg. And we also want to change the terrain around those. That should now be grazing land for sure. Maybe grassland around the actual water features. And this is also lower land, so this can be grazing land here. Which becomes grazing land up here. Which becomes shrubland. Oh no, shrub hills. With shrubland being in the con uh, adjoining areas between the woods. I mean, we've been using rain shadows pretty aggressively, so the shrublands are probably immediately behind the mountain range. So actually, these should probably be regular hills here. And then shrubs behind it. There's a nice little pass right there. There's another one there, so that one's going to be less good to traverse. And then we want our grazing land to be all of this. Maybe some shrubland in here. And shrubland hills can be this. We'll get some shrubland regular behind you. And I think that this is going to be grazing land, not high quality farmland. I don't think that has any reason to be grassland either. In fact, I kind of like the idea that it's just shrubs. And then here is probably grazing it's all right it's just nothing special it's exactly what it is and I would say that this is probably grassland on those little pieces there probably these bits as well These little bits down here around the water's edge are going to be grassland, so there could definitely be space for 
population here. What's the difference between full mountains and mountain tiles? I haven't been using the full mountains just because the generator hasn't used them. Full mountains are probably just going to be even more mountainous areas. So maybe like right in the middle would be full mountain. Although for that I've actually been using the the, uh, the snow tops. I just haven't used them. No reason to or against. Indy's dog, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome to the channel. And you're going to annoy me if you're just one little province on your own. Let's get rid of you. And then on this side, we're going to put grassland on those bits, and there, and then those, I think, are going to be grassy hills. There's no reason for them not to be out here. Oh yeah, I definitely like that those are different colours now, that's a lot better. I think I might also make the, the water up here a bit, oops, wider. And then we're going to put a bit of a marsh in here, where that just kind of gets soaked in a bit. Half tempted to put a bit of a marsh here. No, we'll leave that as decent grassland. It has good drainage. <laughs> there you go. Drains into the lakes, that's what they're there for. Then up here in the north is definitely grazing. Maybe even step. You know what, I think that's probably step. We're getting far enough north where it's getting a bit harder for things to grow now. Grazing, in fact, that might be grass. Grazing here, and then step. Maybe even shrub, shrubland? No, this is still step. See, this is a mixture of tundra and step. With deciduous forests. You know what, that makes, yeah, I'm fine with that. Haven't looked much at the snowy bits. We got snow fields. I want that. What's that? It's not glacier. It's not under dark. What is that? Desert cold? Nope. Coastal desert? Nope. Sandy desert? Nope. Snowfield? Nope. I don't think that's in the classic tool set there. My guess is it's not one of the classics. But then how did it generate it? Because it kind of looks like rocky desert. It definitely is, with something put on top. But I don't think you can just layer stuff on top of this, it's, it's one or the other. Well, whatever, we'll turn it into step, it's fine. Because at the moment it kind of looks like ice. And I don't want it just to be solid ice, not at that distance.
We'll just use the solid ice as the kind of, it's gone too far north and I don't really know. Colour. And that's going to be grazing in all of these. And in all of this. And in all of that. And in all of this. And that's going to be thick forest here in the middle. And this is all going to be grazing. And that's all going to be regular hills. That's fine. This should be grassland here by the coast. And this should be shrubland. However, do we want to refine that area at all? Are we okay with these random mountains? Because they are very random mountains right now. Right, I was going to turn that into more of a mountain range. I'm not sure that I'd necessarily like the shrubland here. I think I'm going to add a bit more mountainous oomph. To this region. Disappearing up to there. Which actually means that these two should switch around. That should be... Desert Shadow. I do, however, want to have a nice little pass in there. And these passes are fine as well. So I need to switch those two around. So those need to be grassy hills. And you know what? Behind this, I'm actually kind of okay with this just being heavily forested. Just add a couple of hills on the other side. Then maybe have the shrubland down there. Let's add a bit more heavy forest. This should be heavy forest back here. It's kind of a sheltered woodland. Which we can do something interesting with. Heck, that should probably even be mountainous forest. Let's make this into mountainous forest. So it's a bit bigger. And then we can have hilled forest. Into there, then we can have thick forest. All of that. There you go, now that's a more interesting landmark. And then we can also bring in some more hilly grass. have some shrubs around the edge. That's fine. And this should also be... Actually, you know what? No. This, this is still going to be hills. It's a bit higher. And that's going to be one of the major passes there, and then there's going to be another one here. I feel like this needs to be a bit more mountainous. At least a bit more difficult. That'll do. I kind of feel like I want the mountains to continue to spread up like that and make this into a really major mountain area. with a couple of white caps in the middle to say this is a major mountain area. And then this area here in front of it is fine as that is. Do I want mountains here? Mm, I don't really add anything. Let's put some more 
grassy hills. Grassy hills are fine. I like grassy hills. Then slightly random stuff here, which I think I'm just going to turn into more forest. Here and here. Maybe that should be light forest. I actually kind of like the idea that those hills are more shrubby. It's a fair bit drier. before it gives into the proper forest. We have a tiny bit of desert here, randomly, which we're going to turn into grassland, because why not? There we go. So next time we still need to work on like this section. We're getting closer to the elven area and this is going to be good for us to kind of define where borders and things start to appear. Um, we're going to need more rivers. We need a lot more rivers. Ultimately I want the river networks to look more like this. Down here. But that's something we can add because rivers make nice natural borders again. We could probably do another mountain thing going down there, so this really is a bit of a rift. It's not a bad idea. <clears throat> we could also do a bit more of a mountain going there, but I think it's okay having that as uh, hills rather than a full-on mountain. This is where it's rippled. The only thing that's a little bit weird is the fact that this is going in a different direction to this. But hey, things aren't uniform in how they buckle. It's just that this section here tends to be uniform. So maybe up here there's another plate coming in from the northeast, which is pushing into this. So this would be another rift. Maybe we'd need to turn that into another rift. Make this lake a little bit more impactful. So you can really see it kind of rippling and buckling. That's not a lake, it's a bay. I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> uh, we could c cover that up with something. For the moment, I'm just going to use farmland until I know a bit better about what I want this to look like. Or we could just have it as a bay. I think I do want to make this whole area up here a bit more chunky. So we're going to put some more step in there. And make this a really dangerous incursion zone. This is where one of the migra migratory groups came in from up there in the north. There's two land bridges. And then we have another big lake type entity here, potentially. That would be like the um, Caspian. I wonder how the Caspian was formed. It's in a bit of a weird place. Like, how the hell did that appear?
Because then we really do have the land bridge, like Persia, and then also kind of going via Georgia. And we also have a southern one in our world. I mean, really, it's this land bridge and this land bridge. I think I'm going to make this a lot bigger. There you go. Now that feels a bit more belligerent. Pretty sure the Caspian's formed by a glacial depression. You know what? I don't like that this is a sea. I think it's just going to end up in tundra. I'm just going to put step there for the time being. Actually, what I could really do is grab some of the actual border only. That's not border only. What was the one that's just white? See, that's missing. Like that's a different shade of white, but never mind. Is this color things if no? I'm sure it is just something which is changing. Oh, it's ice. It's this, isn't it? Uh, no. But icy is what it's supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, I like that a lot more. So we have this major land bridge up here in the north, and we have some kind of ocean which maybe is actually... Uh, no, I feel like that mountain would go further up and in. Oh, see, this gets covered. So it's definitely overwriting something. Is it because I had ice enabled? Oh, it might have been. Yeah, it was. Huh. So some stuff can feature the icy thing, but not everything. And I kind of want to fill in this as well. So we go farmland, icy farmland. Aha! That's what that is. I mean, that does make sense. <laughs> Let me just cover that up. So this is a lake. We could even try to shape it out a bit more right now. So let's close up all of this. Close up that. And it's a bit of an icy lake. It's, it's hard to know exactly what's up there. So there we have it. This is going to be the Elven Realm in here, probably. And then something's going to be here. I do like that this has become the Dragonborn Enclave. Gives them an area in this world where they have a foothold. But again, this is eventually going to have to be something that we will um, simulate. Could it be a lake held by sea ice, maybe, if it melts to reach some other ocean? Quite possibly. I mean, we could have it like a river flowing through into here. Which, to me, makes the most sense. Have it flow, like, down to here. In fact, you know what, let's do that now, just so we remember. do 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 do, -do Shapes. This is going to be a big-ass river. 
And it is going to flow. Why are there hills there? Let's just make that, oops, non-icy farmland. Just temporarily, so I can put a river in. And then you are going to go down to here. don't like how it kind of swings out, but we can play with that a bit more next time. It gives us an idea of what we wanted to do. No, you know what? I hate that. <laughs> I really don't like this. Remove you. Remove you. I think that this river... is going to flow through here. It's going to come through here. up into there and then there's going to be a stream which goes from here nope that's horrible I think I might even just get rid of that You know what, now I've gotten rid of that, I didn't even need that river there. Let's just boop it away. Booped away. Like a northern Niger river. I mean, we have a Niger-like river. Uh, no, we actually got rid of it. We used to have a river that swung straight through the middle of this. But I decided it didn't really make sense with the topography. But this is better. Like, if we're talking about the ripples, then the land could be just naturally a bit lower here. And also, it's cut through hills. Right, rivers erode. I don't like how thick this is. I'm going to make that a bit more steppy. Icy step? Yeah, we do. There you go. There's the icy step up there. Ah, yeah, that's better. And this bit should not be step. That looks weird. Let's turn you into grazing land. Not icy grazing land. Although it probably is. There we go. And with that, I am pretty happy with what we have achieved. So we've fleshed out a little bit more of this middle section. We've added the plateau in that area. We've made the fracture come through here. We've added the river so we can have a better idea of like the, the elven homeland, which I think is going to be this chunk. Maybe going down to here, so this is very much going to be borderlands. We've got step coming up here which is going to be something. We've got step coming through here, which is going to be something. Might even put like centaurs or something up there. Have this just kind of open. We still need to add a bit more detail to the southern dwarven realms. We did the north, but we haven't done the south. We need to do the bit in the middle. That's still very much deserty horribleness. And then we need to do this, which is probably going to be a bit more of a Norway feel. 
And then, at some point, we'll need to do the archipelago and turtle and... And the peninsula. We have not touched the peninsula, and that's going to be one of the really important areas, because I have a feeling that's going to be of major strategic interest to multiple different players. Have the centaurs that beat the dragonborn and the goblins? Maybe. I do kind of want the hobgoblins coming in from this angle. I think it just makes more sense. So yeah, maybe we won't have the, the Norse goblins. We'll have the goblins maybe coming along here, being pushed out by the centaurs. Maybe? So maybe this is going to be the hobgoblin realm. It would be a heck of a lot more defensible. Maybe that's why they get pushed out by the dragonborn. So this was the hobgoblin realm until they got kicked out by the dragonborn. Forcing the hobgoblins to migrate over to something like this, where they're more st uh, strategically central. Visigothic goblins. Yeah, exactly. Something like that. To be... Th we need to think about that. Like, the migrations are definitely something we can use to shake stuff up when we start simulating all of this. So it's something we'll have in our back pocket and then be like, oh, what if these guys arrived here? What's the impact? Well, boom. Okay, well, I think that this is going to be a good place to call this. So thank you, everyone, for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, be sure to hit that follow button to get notifications when I'm live again in the future. If you have really enjoyed this and you would like to see more of this type of content, then please do consider helping the channel out, either by subscribing here on Twitch or you can also... Uh, check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash mordredviking. I do have a YouTube channel, which you can find at youtube.com slash mordredviking, where this series is being hosted. So the, everything up to this point, the whole generation of the world, talking about the different races, the evolution of the different races, that's all on the world building series on youtube.com slash mordredviking. And I have a Discord, which is where the community hangs out. They're a very cool bunch, and it's always a pleasure to see some new faces over there. We do have a channel on the Discord dedicated to world building, so if you wish to uh, provide some new ideas if you have sudden flash of genius uh, when you're just out and about doing your daily stuff then please do come hit us up on the discord in the meantime the group that this is being made for is the digital dragons and you can find us over on twitch.tv slash digital dragons we are going to go and raid that now i know they're not live i know they're not live because i'm the gm and i kind of run that channel but we're going to go ahead and raid them, slash raid, digital dragons. So if you are interested in seeing some Dungeons and Dragons, or you just want to see how this all turns out in the end, then just head on over there, hit that follow button, making it dead easy for you, and you can follow us and it'll be awesome. We are currently playing through the Icewind Dale scenario. Uh, the party is in a major area, big castle. Big, uh, big dungeon crawl type thing going on at the moment. It's a good time. Anyway, that's all for me for now. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow, Thursday at 5 for some Total War Warhammer 3, New Embargo, Kislev, and then again at 9, bear in mind 9, not 10, for the multiplayer game with Templin Institute and somebody. Anyway, that's all for me for now. Thanks everyone for watching. I'll see you all later. Raid! And hit the follow button. Or digital dragons. Bye-bye.